Yeah. Got a late night intro music. Sadly, I don't have any video to go with it. So, 1.50 a.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to talk about microphones. I'm really stepping up my live game. Stepping up the live game. Now let's hear the fade. And cut. <laughs> I wish there was a better way to do that, but there's just not. So, tonight in the middle of the night, I was... Um, just thinking about talking about something related to dialogue capture. Um, if you are a filmmaker and you are passionate about audio, then you do somewhat of dialogue capturing. And uh, I wanted to bring up a recent project of mine and actually talk about how I did the dialogue capture for it. And I wanted to talk about how, um, I don't know, some experimentation I did with some new microphones I got. So we're going to try some things tonight. In the middle of the night, um, I got a glass of wine here, red wine, the good kind. I'm usually a beer guy myself, but uh, but uh, what's up, Logan Johnson and Voxbot? Voxbot, a.k.a. Uh, uh, what was your name it used to be? Jericho? Jericho Kenobi? What's up, man? Good to talk to you. So... Um, what I'm what I'm talking about here is basically when I'm out capturing dialogue for video production, I'm using uh, usually two mics, an overhead shotgun, and in my case, that's the Rode NTG3. And I'm also using a backup mic, which is going to be something like the DR10L or the Rode Link Filmmaker's Kit or a Countryman EMW, just some sort of a backup mic like that. So what I did was, hang on. The other day, I decided to make a purchase for a stereo pair of Rode NT5s. Now, why? Why, you might ask? Well, I had a couple reasons for this. But as I get them out, I'll tell you, my main reason is for ambient audio and Foley. Because I love stereo sounds. Here they are. Check them out. Check out these bad boys. So I'm going to script the whole screen here, but everything's magnified. Back to beard. Guys, I'm still a novice when it comes to streaming. Now you're going to get all the menu stuff for like five minutes until it goes off again, <laughs> including the grid lines. That's okay. That's okay because I got a plan to switch over to desktop here. But anyway, I got these NT5s, and they come in a stereo pair for like 400 bucks. And why is because I can go out and actually record stereo audio with something more high quality than not only the Zoom H6, but also, excuse me, Hang on. Also, even more high quality than the Stereo Video Mic X, which I do love this thing. It's a package of stereo mics. It comes with handy features, including a hot shoe mount, uh, 3.5 millimeter jack instead of XLRs. Does not require phantom power. You can do low pass, uh, sorry, low cut filters, high shelves, as well as choose your amplifi amplification coming out of this thing, your gain. So that's a great microphone, and I love it, but. What if we took it to the next level and actually recorded with the NT5? So here's what I was thinking, what, what my plan was. I wanted to try one of these NT5s uh, as a backup mic for an actual dialogue recording. And I'm going to show you the audio between the NTG3, the uh, Tascam DR10L's lavalier microphone that comes with it, as well as the Rode NT5 ahead. And so the NT5 isn't necessarily an interview mic because... It is a cardioid pickup pattern, not a hypercardioid. So here's the here's the little philosophy here. When you're doing indoor dialogue recording, the most ideal mic to pick up the best um, from the subject while rejecting the most amount of echoes without any weird artifacting is going to be a hypercardioid. Excuse me, which is like um, not as tight of a pickup pattern as a shotgun and not as wide as a true cardioid. So if you don't know much about polar patterns. Cardioid obviously is the shape of a heart, cardioid heart, and it's basically what's in front of the mic, uh, making a little heart shape around the edges and going all the way to what's 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 all the way in front of it. So it doesn't pick up anything behind it, picks up a little bit on the sides. This is a cardioid polar pattern dynamic microphone. So if I talk over on the side, it's going to be the exact same pickup for the most part as if I'm in front of it. Hypercardioid is going to be a little tighter, so it's going to just be a more narrow pickup pattern straight in front of it with a little bit in the back. I keep bumping this thing. Sorry, guys. Really, really sorry about that. A lot of mic punching. 
while a shotgun pickup pattern is the tightest. It's going to be, you know, like 15 degrees off the front of the microphone. And the reason they pull that off is they have an interference tube that helps phase out audio from the sides, creating that tight pickup pattern. But like we all know, shotgun mics tend to run into problems indoors when there's an echoey environment because when the echoes from the subject's audio source, aka the mouth, if you're recording a human voice, when that reflects off a hard surface and comes back to the mic, instead of just getting a nice echo, it messes with the phasing inside that interference tube and gets some issues. So I love the sound of the NTG3. I try to use it every, every possible shoot I can, and that's why I'm also a big fan of acoustic proofing. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to send you over into Premiere Pro. I'm going to stay with you here. Oh, look at that, guys. <laughs> Got this cool streaming thing, OBS here, and we're getting really profesh. So let me know if you can see Premiere and if you can still see me and if all is well. Also, let me know if you're here and if you're up late and if you're, you're, you're on that grind because it's a Tuesday morning or also a, a Monday night, depending on how you see those things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to turn off my mic to get this audio to play through cleanly because there's just a situation with my interface um, for doing that. So I'm going to kill my mic for just a second and I'm going to show you on the screen. Actually, I'll walk through this before we, we listen to it. So this top one I'm highlighting right here, here's our sequence. Um, the interview frame is all synced up, all is well. We have two camera angles right here. Uh, I've killed out the wide angle. We just have the close angle. Obviously the soloed audio is down on the NT5. This bottom green audio source right here is the Rode NT5, which is that cardioid pencil mic I just showed you. This middle one right here is the DR10L. In fact, let's do a little miscoloration here. We're going to change the color of the DR10L to purple. And we're going to change the color of the NTG3, which is my favorite, to rose. So NTG3 rose, DR10L purple, NT5 is green. And so what I want you to listen to is, does a cardioid polar pattern pickup affect human dialogue in a room that's well acoustic treated. So one of the things about this room that we were, um, the, one of the things about this room that we were recording in was really cool. We were in this like kind of like a studio space. Um, it was more of a gathering space and there was hard floors, hard walls, hard ceilings, that kind of thing. But they had these big theater curtains that you could pull and shut to put on a show. There was a stage, that kind of thing. And so I shut all these theater curtains and on three uh, different sides of our subject, there was thick, you know, black theater curtains, which if you know anything about those, they're going to suck up sound really well. So I shut all those. I threw some of my sound blankets on the floor and I even put up some on the opposite side of the key. You'll look on his face right here. Obviously, he's being keyed from our right side. He's got a backlight over there on the left, and there's a fill shooting right there in the in-between of his face. And where that fill light is, there is some more audio suppression. There's blankets hung up uh, next to him. So I tried to make it as clean and more as studio as possible, leveraging what they had. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to kill it. Voxbot, you say audio hijack to keep all the signals live. That's interesting. I need to do some more research on that. Again, I'm such a noob with streaming, like the fact that I'm even streaming and the fact that uh, we can talk and the fact that I can be in the picture and premiere. That's cool. So one step at a time here, two in the morning. Cheers to that. I'm about to turn off my signal and show you guys all three of these. So here we go. Hang on to your butts. And um, adults are supposed to be there to help teenagers navigate this, this really challenging time. Um, but what, what teenagers experience and what happens is at teenagers and adolescents. They are in um, a very crucial part in their life where they're forming who they are, they're forming their identity, um, largely determining the trajectory of their lives. And um, adults are supposed to be there to help teenagers navigate this, this really challenging time. Um, but what, what teenagers experience and what happens is um, largely adults aren't there in the way that they, they should be. Uh, and you may even go as far as to say a lot of teenagers are.
Look at teenagers and adolescents. They are in um, a very crucial part in their life where they're forming who they are. They're forming their identity. Okay, I'm back. So raise your hand if you could hear that and if you could distinguish between the signals as we move through them. Because what happened was basically we started with the NTG3. We moved down to the NT5, which was our cardioid pencil mic. And then I went back to NTG3 and then back to the NT5. And then we ended with the DR10L, which is that lavalier microphone. So basically what I'm trying to say is, can't, uh, what I'm trying to prove is, is, or I guess what I'm trying to explore rather, let's get technical here, is can a cardioid condenser microphone, a small diaphragm cardioid like that pencil mic, the NT5, can it be used as a dialogue mic? And I really wanted it to be because, you know, if I run into a situation where I have a shotgun indoors and it's going to be a reflective environment, I do notice the, the messiness that the reflections can cause in that shotgun microphone. So to move to a cardio is great. Again, it's not a hyper. I think there's a capsule I could buy to make it a hyper. Um, I do have both of them. I want them to be cardioid for XY stuff or AB stuff when I'm out recording. If that makes no sense to you, that means uh, how you configure the mics to record st uh, stereo sounds, Foley, stuff like that. Um, ASMR, if you've ever watched an ASMR video, you're going to hear a uh, small or large, large diagram. I can't talk. <laughs> small or large diaphragm condenser microphones in an AB format or even more extreme than that, just like, you know, left and right of frame. So when you and you hear the little noises that they make, like it's just a real extreme stereo field. So that's why I want to keep it cardioid for that. But is it going to mess with the dialogue? So when I listened through this the first time, I noticed that the NTG3 was really high quality, as it always is. Uh, of course, the DR10L was great, but it's really muddy and it's a lav mic and it's a cheap one. So the NT5 had a really bright sound that I did enjoy. I liked it, but um, it picked up reflections in that room that the NTG3 did not. And I thought that was very, very interesting. And if you're into audio, this is just a curious situation. So I dampened every single reflection in that room from my perspective. And there were still some hard floors around, you know, that were gonna cause some problems. But with the NTG3 pointed down on that subject that you can see still right here, because we're still looking at our subject here, um, that NTG3 was mounted right overhead as well as the NT5 and the NT5 picked up more reflections. So what that's telling me is as his voice came out, it would reflect off the ground. The, the pieces of the ground that I didn't cover come back up for the microphone and the NTG3 did a better job of rejecting it like it's supposed to do without causing problems. So all that to say, I don't think the NT5 can be used for dialogue in any meaningful way unless you put a hypercardioid capsule on it. So what I'm going to do next is going to actually take you back over there. We're going to show you just a little bit of the finished product all mixed and everything um, just because it sounded really good, in my opinion. Um, the NTG3 did along with music and sound effects. So forgive me for the switch again. I don't have that cool audio hijack hack, but check this out and listen to it and let me know what you think about it. Out of the students, the teenagers that we deal with, um, they're in situations where uh, general, generationally they don't have the resources, the social capital is not there, not just in their lives, but you're talking about entire communities where the role models aren't there, resources aren't there, and so, um, so kids suffer even more that teenagers are not getting um, what they need. So there you had just, a, you know, a really nice signal coming out of the NTG3 paired with the music, some quiet sound effects. I don't know how real time this video was actually playing for you. Um, I could link the actual Vimeo from this finished product before, but this drone footage we shot was freaking cool. Like it just was so cool. I wonder if I just play through, I know you're not going to hear anything here. Um, so I'm just going to mute it up for me, but like, does this drone footage play in real time at all? I just wonder, hang on. It's totally smooth for me. It might be really choppy for you, but we the, the guy I hired to do this used an Inspire 2 system, and he put a telephoto on the Inspire 2 Zenmuse X5, 
which like I think his system was like thirteen thousand dollars total with the Inspire Two, his upgraded camera, the X Five, and uh, then he put a a uh, forty five millimeter on it, which becomes ninety if you take into account the crop factor. Did another cool one here at the end. This is all Casey Mo for anybody on the East Coast. This is Casey Mo. We are the Paris of the Plains. It's a cool place to be. Cool place to be. So let's switch back over to this main scene here. Um, so anybody that's still here, um, let's let's talk. I mean, like, tell me, what type of microphones do you use if you're a video professional or an amateur or an enthusiast? What are the mics that you use when you're out in the field recording dialogue? Do you mic overhead? Do you do the scoop technique where you mic underneath somebody? Are you using lavaliers for the most part? Um, I could show you this. Hang on. There's more to this, but I finally got my my road link kit. I've always rented these things for for shoots and stuff when I'm doing running gun type of type of work. But I finally just pulled the trigger and bought the road link wireless filmmaker kit. And the reason I like it is it is kind of a bulky thing but uh the transmission and the receiver they, they do operate on the wi-fi frequency so they're up at like 2.4 gigahertz rather than lower radio frequencies like the sennheiser ones and some of the more classic lavalier systems and so i love using it i rarely have problems with it there is electrical interference every once in a while and the mic on it sounds pretty good and it's very low profile it's a very small microphone so you can mount it discreetly which i'm going to make a video on at some point about how to hide lav mics without getting clothing rustle that's a big deal so i guess back to that question you know are you using shotgun mics overhead do you put shotguns on the camera you know are you exploring if you're if you're watching this you're probably somehow invested in this channel and if you're invested in this channel you're invested in audio in general and the audio gospel tm hashtag audio gospel just trying to bring better audio to the people you know what i'm saying so tell me this what kind of mics do you use do you put them overhead do you put them underneath all that kind of stuff NTG3 has been mine the whole time. When I first got into the game, though, I would always borrow from Bobby Pitts, who is a filmmaker that brought me into this world. I would borrow his Shure VP89M. And if you just Google that, that is, I think it's like a $1,000 shotgun mic, but that thing sounds so good. It just got the cleanest dialogue audio, whether you were indoors or outdoors. And so using the vp 89 M, I think there's a there's a long, a medium, and a short. S M L. Um, it, it just sounded so good, and it's a little brighter than the NTG3. And now I'm kind of in, accustomed to the NTG3's warmth, if you will. So anyway, I just really like using that now. But those are kind of the I've never really used Sennheiser shotgun mics. Um, just never have. Um, I think that's really it. I just wanted to talk about these NT5s, and if nobody's got any questions um, or want to chit-chat, say what's up in the chat if you want to, if you're still here. Um, finishing your site. Voxbot, tell me about your site. You doing voiceover stuff? That's pretty cool. Still here. Wait, are you the same... Did, did we talk via email the other day? That'd be sweet. Um, Casey Mo, it snowed the last couple of days, which is crazy um, because it's April and it's supposed to be really warm out. Um, so that's been really disappointing. It's been really disappointing, boy. We did talk by email. Great. Now, are you Jericho? Are you the same guy? If so, that's sweet, man. I, I told you I want to be a part. I'm so down. You guys are doing good stuff. I love the work. Love it. Um, let's go back and I'm going to show you some other things here. I'm going to get back to Premiere. Let's go back over to our cool desktop scene. Um, we can just pull in some Arial here ungraded aerial look at some of this stuff or no you know what i actually want to do i'm going to come back to our actual edit here and just show you uh this cool track i used from from uh what's that licensing agency i use art list art list which i do love 
Um, if, if you are a uh, filmmaking professional and you license music, where do you license your music? Are you on um, one of the subscription services like Artlist or Epidemic Sound? Do you like to use the higher end like Musicbed and Marmoset? Um, do you use the old school Audio Jungle? Do you subscribe to Audio Blocks, uh, Audio Socket? What do you guys use? If you guys are actually filmmaking, doing filmmaking stuff out here, what, what do you use? Um, because personally, here's the conundrum I'm in, and I will publicly say this before we, we go in here and and, uh, and do this. This wide frame of Malik, I felt a little bad. He was a big boy. I didn't mean to shoot him that clo that, that wide frame and show off his... Anyway. Um, so what I was going to say was, I've never really said this out loud, but I am a subscriber to Artlist. And I love Artlist. And if you hear the music on this channel, you know it's Artlist. Because the, the main track I usually do for the Friday show, which is on a little hiatus right now, has been this like real cool poppy thing um, by Kay Salas. And I've heard it in a couple other uh, big YouTubers stuff. I've heard it on Gary V's show a few times. Um, I, I heard it before he heard it. So maybe he got it from me. But um, I personally am a musician. And so my music lives on, the, on Marmoset. I'm a Marmoset artist, which is a click to license platform. You don't do a subscription there, um, at least not yet. I mean, Musicbed just announced today, uh, earlier at NAB, that they're doing subscription stuff. So it's like, it's kind of shooting myself in the foot to be an artless subscriber, but the amount of money I save by just being a subscriber there is amazing. So anyway, this was an artless track that was a former Musicbed track. And here's one of the things I love about video production is when you catch the right moments. When, when the music crescendos and the and the video crescendos, this was just one of those moments. I'm just going to play this through here. Again, NTG3 dialogue here. Sounding really good. I'm going to have to kill myself. Uh, no, <laughs> that sounded terrible. <laughs> I'm going to have to kill my mic feed um, to get you this audio. But, but hang tight. Listen to this track. Listen to the crescendo. This is a project I did for this last weekend. Girls go with the girls, and we talk about what Jesus has done. We talk about a Bible verse. We get to eat. The things I learned from from young life was to love and forgive. It's always good to love everybody, and even though people did bad things to you, you can always forgive them and never retaliate and do the same thing they did to you. Civics is so every Monday night. Uh... So anyway, you heard that. This is a <clears throat> this is a local nonprofit here in KC that that helps kids in the inner city, and um, you know there's silly stuff and fun stuff, but it was a fun one to make. So love that, love the music, love all of that stuff. So let's see what's happening over here. He is one of us. Jericho's one of yours. That's cool. Jericho Kenobi, he must be Obi-Wan's son or grandson at this point. Anders, what's up, buddy? Anders from Norway who who won the official Tascam DR10L giveaway this last Christmas. I like the NT5, but I use the NT450 capsule. Sounds great, but not for dialogue, maybe. Yeah, well, see, I haven't even looked into the capsules. Um, I know they make different capsules for it, so i got to go check that out. If they do have a hyper capsule i'd definitely be interested but even without the capsule i mean there was there was two things that happened earlier when we were listening through that when i listened through this capture one yeah it was a it was a cardioid capsule so it's going to be picking up those reflections but beyond that it was just a really bright mic it didn't have a lot of the uh lower mids that i like not the muddiness but just the lower mids that are nice and pleasing, the stuff that you're going to hear from the SM7B. And like what you guys are hearing right now, the SM7B is this delicious signal that I wonder if I can show you here. Hang on. I think I can bring this thing in. Um, oh, I'm going to have to mess with it. Well, I was going to bring in my UAD console. I do have the Apollo Twin Duo and I've got all these Fairchild. I've got a Fairchild compressor, a Precision DSer. I've got some other limiting stuff on there, as well as the Neve 1073 preamplifier mod or whatever you'd call it on this thing. So it's like, uh, you know, as I'm running the SM7B, it's also hitting all these cool effects, which is sweet um, because it just really makes this mic shine. So here's an example of that low mid 
sounding great, in my opinion. And we do have a noise floor tonight. And I think that's just like air conditioning and stuff. But for the most part, it's not the mic. The mic is so quiet, especially when I just record it into the H6 with a cloud lifter only. I use my Pre-73 Mark II, my Golden Age preamplifier, quite a bit. But recently I've had some electrical interference and I don't have anything to ground it with right now. And I've been really busy, so... I'm just going straight in and using the Neve, uh, the Neve thing. So, so that's that, y'all. Um, Twisted Images, evening. How are you? How are you? How is everybody? Let's see. Let me switch desktops over here again and see what is going on. We still have six of you here watching. Thank you for being a part. I do appreciate each and every single one of you for. Um, yeah, just being a part of everything. And let me see if I can switch this back. Sorry, I lost my top chat there. Here we go. Yeah, um, loving the channel. I'm loving my break right now. I was making a lot of tutorials and was just uh, getting kind of burnt out with that. And was like, I need to just take a break and um, interact with people differently here. And that doesn't mean I'm going to stop making tutorials. In fact, I have a couple I want to make like right now. I'm just trying to scale it back a bit and I did have an insane workload last week and it all ended with that big banquet from the video you just saw and actually three other projects that ended last week so trying to balance the professional side of things with the not that this is not professional but I'm not necessarily making a living from YouTube yet which is great I mean I if I never made money from YouTube I would still do this because it's just a freaking blast it fills me up in ways that money could never do. Um, so if that's a byproduct, that's great. But all that to say, sometimes I got to give everything to the professional side and take a break from uh, the YouTube stuff. What I do want to do more of in 2018, uh, I set a goal to, to, to write and produce 12 songs for license this year, um, which I haven't yet done any because it's just been a wild start to the year. So what my plan is there is to get going on that in May, um, maybe late April when the new kiddo comes. Um, April 22nd is that due date, but talked to my wife today who went to the doctor and you know what? It could be any day. It could be any day. So preparing for that and knowing that I'll get a little time off and get some time to do some music stuff, which would be sweet because like I need to get back to music. Music is like the thing in my life that keeps everything grounded. You know how like... <coughs> I'm kind of a crazy person because I'm a creative. Um, I'm a hard person to, to, to live with and be friends with because I'm like manic and all over the place and, and kind of a psychopath, but also very grounded and kind and a good person at the same time. But music is the thing that continues to ground me. Um, so I need to get back into writing that. And hopefully, yeah, and just looking into the licensing world, like what's going to happen with Marmoset, what's going to happen with... Uh, music bed and their uh, switch to this subscription base. Um, I don't know if you've ever used music bed, but I'm excited to see how much that costs because I've used a lot of music beds tracks. If any of you follow the channel for a while, if you watched my interview with a composer video that happened um, almost a month ago now, it was with Zane Callister, AKA young collective. His music is wonderful. Like just wonderful music. It's good for sync. It's good to listen to. He's on the music bed. So go check out young collective. I could link him below as well. Um, and I do need to find out if this is going to save. I think it should. Um, cause the last one I did saved. So you can go back and watch that one on the F eight, which by the way is right over there working on a battery solution for that guy right now. Love the zoom F eight so far. It's been a freaking blast to use quiet, quiet, quiet preamps, backup recording, all the things about that are just absolutely ex excellent. Twisted Images is doing great. Just got some amazing new from my business partnet. Congratulations. I wish you the best. <laughs> so for the last couple of minutes here while we're just chilling, the, the six that are watching now, um, if you guys have any questions, um, shoot them my way. Audio questions, video questions, being a filmmaker, being a composer, being an audio professional, being a regular professional, doing taxes, uh, taxes that, that are due in like a, a, a week or less. I'm still working on that stuff now because cause that's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> so what are your questions? Anything? Should we end it? News from my business partner. Can't type tonight. <laughs> I figured as much. I was just giving you a hard time. Ooh, Voxbot. One piece of gear you can't live without. Ooh. 
That's tough, man. Um, here's the thing. I mean, I could answer this in a couple different ways, but like, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say the Zoom H6, even more so than the F8, and I have a reason for that. But like, that is the most important gear piece of gear in my entire kit. I mean, if I had no cameras, here's the reality: I could rent them project by project would be fine. Um, I could make YouTube videos with my phone. I could shoot a video on this phone. And if I had my H6, then I'd have the capability to plug in microphones or even just use its mid side mic or its XY mic to get high quality dialogue audio for YouTube. The H6 and its form factor is just like wonderful. I just love that recorder more than I've ever loved anybody in my whole life. That's not true, but almost anybody um, because of its like small form factor. It's quiet preamps, the four inputs, the phantom power, the four double A's that do last a long time, like six, seven hours sometimes, depending on how many inputs you're using. Yeah, I love the H6. Hang on. We got it right here, in fact. Um, in fact, I was using it earlier uh, with its E8 EXH6 input, which is this, uh, or capsule rather, which gives you the two extra inputs. So you get the six. They don't have phantom power, but they do have backup recording. Pros and cons, people. Life is this, life is a massive game of weighing your pros and cons. And this was a situation where I did that. So, yeah. F8's on your shopping list. Love that. Um, it, the price was dropped on Sweetwater to seven fifty uh, a couple weeks ago. That's why I bought it. It was like nine ninety nine for years. So when I saw that drop, I just was like, buy Sweetwater card, pay it off when I can. Worry about that later. Zoom just announced the F eight N. Ooh, improved headphone amp. That's a good call. So the headphone amp is pretty weak on the F eight. I have noticed that. You do have to have a quarter inch jack as opposed to the typical eighth inch on, on consumer and prosumer recorders. Improved voltage range for Hirose. Man, Anders, this is really good stuff because I haven't even heard of this stuff. I'm busy trying to figure out my Hirose input right now with my NPF batteries. Got NPF batteries battering, uh, powering these lights, this light and this light. Got my little uh, tiny aperture here as a fill. But yeah, it's got the big Draycast MPF on it. It's a 7,800 milliamp hour battery with like 7.4 volts. Anyway, Hirose, XLR input selectable liner mic, anticipated July delivery around 1,200 bucks. That's cool. I'm gonna have to check that out. <clears throat> Sadly, I already bought one, so. What types of mics would be used for an interior vehicle scene? Duwan, Duwan, how do I say it? Duwan, Duwan. Um, so I just actually shot an interior vehicle scene, um, and I was running audio for it. Um, it was for my friend Nate Happer here in Kansas city and how it worked for this particular one. I'm not saying this is across the board, but how it worked for this one is we had very limited space. Obviously we're inside a vehicle. Um, so I mic'd up each subject, um, the driver, I, I hit a mic with a, with a undercover. Uh, I don't know if you know about Rycote. Hang on one sec. I got him right here. I don't have them right here. Sorry. But Rycote makes this super cool thing called the undercover, which sticks to skin and shirts and has a wind cover. Um, and I stuck it on the right side of the driver because he'd be talking, looking this way. And I stuck it on the left side of the passenger. Um, so the lav mics were going to get the highest quality capture possible. And then I actually boomed overhead with what? The stereo video mic X. I kid you not. So there were a couple things that were going on in this. This was a month ago, so I didn't have my NT5s yet. Um, and I had the NTG3 with me for a scene earlier, just a regular old scene. But in the car, the NTG3 was too big. It was going to be seen in frame because Nate was sitting to my right in a captain seat. Excuse me, in the captain seat. And he was filming, um, you know, he'd film the driver and he kind of leaned over and he'd film the passenger, just kind of get a back and side shot for that cool driving scene. We did not mount any cameras to the dash or anything because we thought that was cheesy as hell. We didn't want to look like comedians in cars or anything. This is more of a dramatic short um, commercial short. So with <laughs> the lav mics and the stereo video mic, I, 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 I took both these channels and instead of stereo linking them in the H6 before I had the F8, I actually put them in two mono signals in two different channels. 
So what we had was one mic was generally looking at one of them, one mic was looking at the other. You get the idea. It actually sounded great. It was inside a Ford Explorer. And with the upholstery and everything, cars are actually a pretty decent acoustic environment. That's why a lot of people record themselves in the car, in my opinion. So, great question. That's what I did in that situation. Would I do something different next time? Probably. Um, I don't know. A shorter shotgun. Or I'd love to get the, the Hyper that I'm looking at, that I've been looking at for a long time. Actually, Curtis Judd. I don't know if you guys know who Curtis Judd is. If you don't follow him on YouTube, you should. Curtis has been huge in my life, um, and he's been really friendly. I've talked to him multiple times um, and actually asked him to come on and do a live stream with me a few times, and he's been busy, but he recommended the Audio-Technica 4053B, which is just a really nice hypercardioid mic, and it's shorter. Obviously, it's more of a pencil mic than the, the massive shotgun of an NTG3 or something even bigger than that, so that'd be my answer for car stuff. Um, it ended up working fine. Twisted images, we're going to get it from ZZ Sounds, Z Sounds, along with a blimp, shotgun, and a boom pole just starting out, and we're broke. It's easier for us. Yeah, we've all been broke, man. We've all been there. Just make sure you get a good boom pole. A bad boom pole leads to a bad experience. Um, I had a just a shitty road boom for a long time, like one of their entry-level road booms, and like immediately it broke. The locking things broke. It didn't work. It just was a mess. So I bought the Boom Pearl Pro. I can't even talk. Boom Pole Pro, and I think if you have seen the video on that, um, it's great. I love it. It's carbon fiber. They advertise you can feed an XLR through it. That's not true unless you're going to pull off all the hardware and then shove that thing through just the three pins and then reconnect the hardware. Kind of frustrating, and you have to lose the rubber stopper at the end. But I love the Boom Pole Pro. I use it for just about everything. Just about everything. So, straight up. Straight up. What else is going on? Anybody else? Good. I'm glad it was on your wish list. I don't know ZZ Sounds. I'm a big Sweetwater fan. Anybody here use Sweetwater? Sweetwater has that amazing, amazing 0% card, um, which is dangerous and amazing all at the same time. This, is, this would be a little transition to talk about, but I, I've talked about this a few times um, in, in some of my videos, but this lens is something that I've been using a lot of. Um, I, I shoot Canon, obviously, Canon C100 and C100 Mark II and the C200 every once in a while. And this 85 1.4 IS lens has just changed the game. In fact, I was talking about this lens right when it came out. I made a video about it, or at least with it. I used it for my big Passion Awards project in Oklahoma City. And uh, Peter McKinnon then made a big video about it. And I was like, bro, I already made this. Why aren't we friends? Why didn't, you know, why didn't you see my video? We could have totally collabed on that. I need some help with images. You need some help with audio. Be a good marriage made in heaven. Final Cut Pro 10. Is that a question or is that just a statement? You just want to be like, you know what, guys? Final Cut Pro 10. That's all I'm going to say. Mic drop. I tried Final Cut for 30 days, and I haven't made the video yet about it. But if you've noticed, if you have noticed, I have not switched. <laughs> and that was very intentional. I did not switch. Um, I prefer Sweetwater, but ZZ Sounds lets you make payments without a credit check. That's cool. I guess that's cool. Uh, I, I, I'll be thinking about your credit there, Twisted Images. I'm happy for you. Yeah, so Final Cut, man, it I tried really hard because I was not only recommended by some of you all um, and some people I respect on the platform that use Final Cut, obviously, um, because I know it works and it's great and it's just another one. Um, I, I grew up on Final Cut, actually, in iMovie and Windows Movie Maker, but Premiere is what I got into professionally in 2014. So to switch to it, the magnetic timeline made sense for me. Um, it was very intuitive for certain situations, but for the way that I edit, it was not at all. I mean, let's just, let's just go over here. Let me just show you something. So here is what I do. When I have a new project, I load everything up here, up into the project, right? And it's a little unorganized right now. I'm usually better than this, um, but this was all kind of thrown together quickly. 
My sequences down here are very important. I have always make a sequence that I call all sync if it's a commercial project. And what is down here, actually sync backup is now what it is, um, even though all sync is what it's usually called. This is where I sync each of my interview frames um, with each of the audio sources. And the reason I do this is because I can separate them all out. I can look at them. Um, you can just see here there's so much space between each one. I can sync them up and then I can take out the audio sources I don't want, move over to someone like this, and then look, I can cut it up. I can cut it up. I can chop it up. And I can move around in it, put markers and everything. Final Cut wouldn't let me do that. They didn't let any dead space in their sequences. So to organize footage, I had to like try to reset my brain about how I saw my digital media and it just did not happen and their audio integration was a mess there was no real track mixer you had to like mix clip by clip anyway it was a mess i will not be switched to final cut i love it um love it love it love it but i will not be switching to it and i am making the presets for final cut we have a couple of people testing those now kagan tech if any of you know kagan he's a great youtuber from nigeria um I need a great dude. He he's testing out some of my presets. Bobby Pitts is testing some of those out. So anyway, all right. Latest update to Adobe Cloud CC with video integration between Audition and Premiere. Final Cut Pro can't touch it. That's so freaking true. I never really use video in Audition, but um, here's the deal. Like I use the audio integration with Audition all the time. And here's one more thing I'm going to say. I'm going to get off topic for just a little bit. I use Logic Pro X for composition, for composing, writing, and all that stuff. When I do dialogue stuff in Logic, I think it is so much better. I think it has a better mix engine, a better, uh, a better summing engine, meaning like it takes all your tracks and puts them all together better than Audition. I think Audition's clumsy in a multi-track workflow, but I'm usually using it in a single track workflow. But the integration and the dynamic linking is amazing. And like that tutorial I just did on the brand new auto ducking, I mean, that's huge. That's big. Like if you don't do audio stuff, and you work in Premiere, that just like, that just saved you. Um, that just, it gives you the ability to learn it, um, to experience it, set those settings. I mean, I will, I will probably use it and then tweak it in the future. I just haven't really integrated it yet. So, so, uh, <coughs> Dewan, your audio series is an eye opener. Tell me if I'm saying that wrong, my man. I, I'm sorry. I'm terrible at names. Your audio series is an eye opener. What does the future hold for your channel? Good question. You know what? I think the future is bright. I think we're growing. Um, I set a goal to hit 100,000 subscribers this year. And I think that the content I create, the level of quality that I bring to the table, as well as the content and the value I bring from an audio perspective, it just needs to be seen. Um, we're growing, obviously. It, it took me a year to get to 900 and, and three months to get to 1,800. So, I mean, by that math, we're going to start exponentially growing pretty soon. And even if we don't, I'm going to have a blast being here and doing this. And I feel grateful every step of the way. I feel grateful for each and every one of you. But I do think we could easily hit 100K this year. Um, and, and, and the future for me, like... Tutorials is my thing. I freaking love it. Um, preaching the audio gospel. I love that that talking about that because audio is like my thing. I'm an audio enthusiast first, and then I'm a professional second. Um, so that's huge. Um, doing more vlog stuff is in the future. I have a couple things in in the works that I'm trying to work on as I get some time. So that's kind of the future for 2018. Who knows? And you know, maybe I'll get to the end of the year and I'll be like, hey, this isn't for me, and I quit. I don't expect that to happen. Because I'm not really that type. I don't like to quit things. I like to finish things. I like to smash things, even when it gets uncomfortable, because uncomfortable is the best thing in the whole world. It's where you grow. I am, I agree. I don't understand why he only have 1.9 thousand subs. Yeah, that's right. Twisted, you're right. I think it's just YouTube is a saturated place, to be honest. Like, it's just, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of content. And what I don't know if you guys know Roberto Blake. He's been tremendously helpful to me. Um, not personally, I don't know him, but his content has. But his whole thing is like, who's getting the views right now? It's the people that draw the the demographic and the age and the gender of who has disposable time. Like the 12 to 15 year old female is 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 the primary driver of views. The 10 to 14 year old male, and it's like my channel's not for them. And 
no offense to those kids, like love those kids, but like they're watching Logan Paul and Jake Paul and they're, they're into the drama and they're into the, you know, the, the, the stuff that I just don't really give a shit about. And, you know, I, I love Casey Neistat and he also pulls from that crowd. Um, but like, I'm just never going to have that. So the people that watch my channel, I wouldn't be surprised if most of you were men age 20 to 40. Um, these are the people that like I'm preaching to because we're the ones trying to crush it in filmmaking. I would love it if more women came on board, but I look at my stats. I know the analytics and it's, it's like 90% men because a lot of us are in the filmmaking world. A lot of us are in the audio world. So audio is kind of nerdy. Not everybody's pumped about it. So that's, you know, that's not going to be a huge view driver there. And I'm very content with that. I would never want to sell my soul to get, to get kind of empty views. So I hope that answers that question. You're still creating your personal workflow in Final Cut Pro. I'm sure there's a developer who will make what you need. Check out Command Post. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I, I do agree. There's always stuff that can be worked around. But right now, I'm kind of getting on Adobe's case. I've emailed them like four or five times, submitted requests for their track mixer to be able to export audio plugin presets. Really like a like a channel strip preset, preset that you can do in a DAW in like Logic or Pro Tools because that would be huge. I think that'd be awesome. If I could get you guys presets that you would just open up in Premiere and they would work, boom, that'd be awesome. It works for Final Cut. I've already have those developed. I'm not ready to put those out yet because there have been kinks with multiple people and I'm not gonna put that out and, and ask for money for it until it's perfectly worked out and ironed out. But multiple people have used those and Final Cut's great because like I can just give you the preset file, you open it up, or you copy it into the file structure, you open up Final Cut, you go under audio, you see Oliver J. Hughes audio presets, you grab the lav mic one, you throw it on, and boom, everything sounds better. So that's in the works, but yeah, I know. There's developers doing stuff all the time for sure, bruh. On WCC over anything, it's so easy to transfer from Premiere to After Effects to Audition and back and forth. Totally agree. Even Photoshop, dude. I love editing titles in Photoshop, and I'll just grab a still, a PNG, you know, some sort of an image uh, still frame that I've gotten from a client. And instead of opening it in Photoshop, I open it in Premiere. I've got it right there. I actually already edit with it. And if I want to put a little outer glow on it or something, I, sit, I just right click and hit edit in Adobe Photoshop, and boom. Look at that. Voxpod, you see Mike Russell, the Adobe Audition tutorial guy and music radio creative owner, named you one of his five most subscribed channels. We were pleased to see that. I did see that because he tweeted that. Um, and I honestly wasn't that familiar with Mike Russell. Uh, I was familiar with the channels that he linked me with, which I was honored to be a part of. Um, but that was cool. That was cool to wake up to one morning. I think it was last week um, he did that. And I tweeted back at him and he was like, thanks, Oliver. I loved your, I loved your uh, noise reduction tutorial in Adobe Audition. <laughs> that's a really bad British accent and that's not in any way to say British accent are not the sweetest because they really are he was sweet he was cool I'd love to have a green screen set up like his his audio sounded crisp and delicious as well delicious audio is the best the best thing so 2.39 a.m. let's see where we're at here stream wise we've been going for 48 minutes we better probably call it pretty soon here um Let's see. Tomorrow I'm filming a Rooftop Tuesday. Um, I haven't done that in a while. Uh, we got a new roof here. And so I'm pumped about doing that. Going to get up there probably sometime in late morning. Got a meeting at 7 a.m., which is in, oh, four hours and 20 minutes. But I like that. What is the best workflow for sound in an NLE? How do I organize audio? That's a good question. There are... There are many ways to think about that, but what I would do, and this current Premiere project isn't a great example, but I would have my audio under a subdirectory, typically called audio, and what is not in here, what usually is, is organized by recorder type or mic type, where I would say like, or even like scene. So multiple, uh, multiple shoot days, I would organize it by the shoot day, be like, Interviews one, interviews two, B-roll one, B-roll one, you know, sunrise, all that stuff. And then you go in and you have your audio from the H6 or the F8 or, or the Tascam DR100 Mark III or whatever you're using and mic type. Get it that way. And then I always have a bin called Foley. 
and my Foley bin is always the audio that is going to be put in for sound design. And it's either stuff I've made or it's stuff I've gotten online from some of the various sound banks that I subscribe to or have access to. And that way it's all just right there. But here's the thing about Premiere that I love is I will get that all down into sequences down here before I do anything. So I mean like right here, like, you know, here's a B-roll sequence. This was all the B-roll I shot on Monday night. Uh, here's a B-roll I shot on a different night. It's all here with markers and everything. Here's all the aerial that I hired out. Um, here's one of the first edits. Usually these are down here for me. I had to do a different type of uh, uh, layout to do a stream here because usually I'm on the two monitors. But another edit, backup sync, that kind of thing. So, I mean, you know, just keep it in bins, keep it organized. Um, if I do a big Foley session where I am recording lots and lots of sounds... I will probably bring that into Logic before I do anything in Premiere and just lay it out all out on a multi-track uh, workflow and just kind of listen through track by track, see what's there, make markers, do metadata stuff if I need to, process there if I need to, and then kind of move into Premiere. So, yeah, audio can be a mess. You really got to be aggressively interested in uh, naming structures. These are named terribly. This was very lazy, very lazy on my part. You're editing a fighting scene. There's so many sound effects and music. The company you can purchase this content from is Edit Stock. Check them out. That's sweet. I love that. I edited a fight scene last year. Um, it wasn't for anything official. It was for the film supply challenge. And I edited that together. And I got all the sounds from either my mouth or audio blocks. Audio blocks is the cheap one out on the block but they do have some decent stuff. And I'm going to say that, take that statement with like 17 spoonfuls of honey and salt because most of their stuff is crap. I'll be honest. <laughs> but yeah, I'll check out edit stock. That looks legit. That looks legit. I wonder if I could open up here, um, show you some of my workflow over in audition before we go. Um, so what I did was, so this guy was zoom one, track one. So in the zoom one folder, this usually, again, is named better. This was his take up here. And if I full screen this guy, you can see all the metadata here recorded into the H6 called zoom one, track one, track one, track two, that kind of thing, because I had a lav mic coming in as well. So I took his raw take, you know, straight out of the recorder. And like you guys have been talking about, Edit in Adobe Audition. How amazing is that? And it'll just pull it out, put it in Audition. Let that load up here. And I think over here in OBS, I'm going to have to select Audition as we're going. But, uh, yeah, it's going to. We have to switch to Audition just to check it out. So yeah, here in Audition, I always have this spectral wave guy over here. I always like to look at this um, because that just gives you such good data on not only amplitude um, and frequency, but uh, yeah, amplitude and frequency. I'm sorry. It's getting late, y'all. It's getting late. Basic waveforms are just amplitude, but here you get frequency, which is so chill. Amplitude is color here, obviously. You know, the brighter the color, the more yellow the color, the more intense the amplitude. And then the more purple, the cooler the color, the, the, the more uh, soft the amplitude, quiet the sound. And then the frequencies is, for, is on the y-axis from, from uh, bottom to top. So And time is, is on the x-axis. So I love doing this stuff, and you can really zoom in and see what's going on. Here's one thing I just want to say. I'm going to potentially do a video on this. I don't like doing too many videos these days about uh, third-party stuff, but check this out, y'all. Isotope. I have Isotope RX-6 Advanced. This thing has completely changed the game for my audio editing workflow. It's uh, denoising. It's spectral denoise, the declicking, the, the decrackling. Oh, my gosh, the deplosives. They somehow, this software knows how to remove those types of things with like without touching the vocals <laughs> for the most part so anyway i bought rx6 about six months ago and it completely changed my life 
So I, I, honestly, I'm not going to, I may not make a video on it. I'm not sure. I don't know who that would bless and who that would harm because people would be like, oh, I don't have that. I don't know how to use this. And it's like, well, I know, but what if you could? I'll tell you what, I'll make a video on that if Isotope wants to like do a deal with me and be like, hey, go to isotope.com slash Oliver slash audio gospel and be chill. Be chill. Oh, Voxbot. So here's the deal. I don't know if I said in my email back, like I do want to see what you guys have done. I want to know the research you all have done. Um, because I would love to, to hear your different DAWs. And if you're like taking Logic Pro X into that, Pro Tools in that, Ableton, Cubase, like if you've looked at all that stuff, that would be so sweet. And I want to, I want to talk to you guys about all the plugins you've looked at, you know, Fab Filters, Waves, UAD, all the stuff that I use. Um, and I know a lot of people use, so that'd be sweet. We'll send you our data. That'd be awesome. RX6 is great. Anders. Hey, Anders, if you're still here, I want to ask you, man, how's your recording going? How's your binaural situation going? Because I'm like, I love 3D audio. I'm pumped about this new road mic they just announced at NAB or are about to announce. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it like looks like the Stereo Video Mic X, but it's got like four of these capsules and they're pointing in all directions. I love 3D audio. I love that kind of stuff. I don't know how to even begin to do it. I just know that when the Falcon Heavy launched, um, that the big SpaceX SpaceX launch a couple months ago, there was a guy. What's his name? He's a YouTube channel. Oh gosh, and he learns something every day or smarter every day. Uh, he's got another channel about audio, and he has a binaural setup. And I think it's one of those eight do ear things that he puts on. And man, listening to that in headphones as that rocket took off, dude. Love language. Audio is my number one love language, followed by audio gear. So if you want to be my friend, let's talk audio and audio gear. It's getting better. A lot of nature, though. Really relaxing. Dude, that's good. You could sell that stuff online, <laughs> honestly. Get a little camera with it. Be good stuff. It'd be really good stuff. Okay, y'all. I think we are on the way out. Um, I need to get to bed here. Um, but a great live stream tonight. Good to just chill and hang. Talking audio tools, talking microphones. Um, I'm going to start doing this a little bit more. I like doing the late night sesh because not a lot is going on on YouTube. So thank you again to each and every one of you who, who do tune into this stuff, who do subscribe to the channel. I do appreciate you all the time. Um, making your own mics. That's legit, Anders. Keep that up, man. Keep in touch. But I do appreciate each and every one of you for being a part of it. Um, share the channel with your friends. Tweet it out. Facebook it out. Um, let's keep spreading the audio gospel together. Um, and 2018 is going to be a great year. The future's bright. So with all that, I'm going to sign out with the classic music. And see you guys next time.